Sky Eastman here. Join me on a caribou bow hunt on this episode of Eastman's Hunting TV Classics. Hi, I'm Guy Eastman, publisher of Eastman's Bowhunting Journal. As you might have guessed, today's show we're going up north to hunt caribou in the Northwest Territories of Canada. We're going way up 30 miles south of the Arctic Circle to Peterson's Point Lake Lodge. Now Point Lake is a huge freshwater lake that's over 80 miles long and right in the middle of the central barren ground caribou migration. It's going to be the last week of August, they're still in the velvet, but they're starting to gather up to start to migrate south for the winter. Welcome to the Arctic, folks. This is Peterson's Point Lake Lodge, which is about an hour and 45 minute flight on a twin otter there, north of Yellowknife, Northwest Territories. Now, Jim Peterson has this down to a science. Every 10 days, he has two otters deliver a new set of hunters and pick the old set up. And then the other plane brings in a full load of fuel and supplies. These twin otters are turbocharged and can carry quite a load. There's 10 hunters, two pilots, and all our gear in that plane. He'll back this plane right up on the beach here and we'll unload and the last set of hunters from a previous hunt will load up with all their gear and their antlers and meat. We were happy to see that all the previous hunters had filled out with two caribou. In Northwest Territories we can both take two caribou on our license. This is our cabin and that's my brother Ike. Wow these are nice. Ike and I have a cabin all to ourselves. He's come along with me to help do some filming and also hunt. After a short arctic night, Ike and I flipped a coin and he won the toss and it was his turn to hunt first. Ike, there's one up on the shore there. So our guide, Paul Jones, took us out to an island where he'd been seeing a lot of caribou on the previous hunt. And sure enough, here's a nice bull taking a nap. He's got a good double shovel, some nice tops on him too. That's a good bull. Yeah, yeah, he's a good looking animal, nice bez on him. Um, I think the way he's heading, heading out onto these flats here, yeah. uh, I think our best bet is to just pull into shore and try and sneak up ahead, uh, just behind him. Ike and Paul beach the boat and get up on the shore to try to get a better look. And they run into these five bulls. There's a bull in the bunch here with nice tops and Ike thinks it'll be a bull he want to take with his bow. This is Ike's first time bow hunting, so I'm kind of helping him here. I said, Ike, if you can get up behind this rock, yeah, that rock right there, without him seeing you. Oops, well, too late on that. Being Ike's first time bow hunting, he doesn't want to take a very far shot. These caribou, even though they look really close, they're about 50 to 60 yards right here. And Ike's comfort zone is 30 yards or less, so He's trying to ease up a little closer. They're really curious. These caribou don't see people too often up here. They don't quite understand what's going on here. That arctic wind swirls and they get a whiff of Ike and head off to the other side of the island. Ike draws his bow back just for some practice. After all that, Ike realizes we were looking at the wrong caribou. That's him. Right there. Well, the bull we had seen from the lake comes up out of that grassy slope. Well, there's the one at the tops. Tries to catch up with these other bulls. Out there just a little too far. As you can see here, if 
if you can get these caribou out in these boulder piles, you can stock up on them pretty close. Oh, like he's pretty disappointed. Hey, don't worry. We're here for seven days. It's only the first morning, Ike. It'll get better. That rock wasn't as big as I thought it was. <laughs> Ike's learned an Arctic lesson there. Everything looks further out and bigger than it actually is up there in that Arctic. After setting up the spotting scope, Ike spotted a bull coming right at us. Now, this is just a decent bull. He's not quite what Ike and I are looking for. His tops aren't very good, and his shovel and bezels are just so-so. Let me set this funny sequence up a little bit here for you folks. Ike is sitting right next to me, and he'd taken his coat off, and he has a long sleeve white t-shirt on. And this bull caribou thinks we might be another caribou. He sees Ike's white sleeves moving, and thinks it might be a caribou's mane. So he moves around to get a better look, and he walks right up to us. Look at him, he says, hmm, what's going on here? As soon as he catches that wind, he says, oh boy, that isn't a caribou. And he heads off on his way. Ike draws his bow back again, just to practice. He says, ah, he's not big enough anyway. Not today. Yeah, maybe tomorrow, Ike. Shortly after that, we glassed out in a grassy flat and found a really nice caribou. It's got really nice tops, good bezes, and a good shovel. And Ike says, this is a caribou I'd really like to get a shot at. So Paul said, we'll just wait him out, see what he's gonna do. Sure enough, after about an hour, he started working his way right up to us. Oh, those bugs are bad up there. Those bugs are just tearing this caribou up. If you watch him, he just is constantly shaking and trying to get the bugs off. These flies and bugs can be pretty bad on these caribou in the summer up there in the Arctic. A caribou headed off up this ridge just a little too far for us to bow hunt. Oh, like he's getting disappointed again. But Paul knows how to hunt this caribou. He says, we'll go around to the other side of this ridge, Ike, and we can cut him off. I know just where he's going. I've hunted here before. Sure enough, we went over to the other side, got in front of him, and Ike finally found a rock big enough to hide behind. And he sneaks right up behind this rock. I told him, I said, Ike, get right behind that rock and pull your bow back and just step out, and he'll be right there and just whack him. So sure enough, just like we'd written it into the script, Ike steps behind a rock, pulls his bow back, and steps out. Now this bull's feeding, and you're going to see his antler tips right out in front of Ike. See him right there? He's just feeding his way up this ridge. And old Ike, he got a little excited and didn't wait for the bull to come completely out so we could see it with the camera. That's all right. He's a first-timer. Ike makes a terrific shot on that caribou, 25 yards, Dead. and that arrow went right through him. That rocket broadhead expandable really did the trick on this bull. How far was he when you got him, do you think? I think about 25. I shot between my 20 and 30 yard pin. Oh, was, that's great. Well, he's just up over here. Okay, that's, let's go get him. All right, way to go. Oh, that's great, Paul. That bull didn't go more than 60 yards and he piled up. Look at that. Look at that. Hey, congratulations, Ike. This Thanks, is a guy. heck Appreciate of a trophy it. caribou. Oh, this is, a... this is awesome. We uh, you made about a 25 yard shot yep. with your bow tech and uh, that rocket broadhead really did the job. I don't think he went more than 75 yards or so. Yep. And he piled up and you made a great shot on him and he's uh, real strong in the front end. Yeah, he is, really is. He's got really nice, uh, really nice shovel and uh, he's actually a double shovel. Um, Got great bez. It's just a great, great caribou. Still in the velvet. We were able to watch him and, and uh, film him and glass him. Yep. And he took a nap out in that clearing and we waited him out and we're patient. And then he started working his way to us. We were able to ambush him and uh, get in front of him and you were able to make a nice shot. Congratulations. That's a great caribou. Thanks, guy. I appreciate it. Thanks.
Well, today we're gonna to try with a bow. Paul has suggested we go to a place called Esker Bay, which has a long river that comes down through it, and the country has some hills and uh, mountains in there that he thinks, he's seen a lot of caribou in the last week in that country, and he thinks that we'll have a better chance of maneuvering and getting up, spotting and stalking, and getting close to a caribou for our bow. So let's go give it a try and see what happens. Ready, Paul? I'm ready, guy, let's go. Ready? The next day, it was my turn to bow hunt. And after about an hour ride on the boat, we arrived at Esker Bay. As you can see, it broke out into just a beautiful valley full of caribou and grizzly bears. After about an hour glassing, Paul spotted a bull that we definitely wanted to get a closer look at. After looking him over with the spotting scope, we decided this was definitely a bull we wanted to try to get on. We had to work our way across this valley, and the plan was to get up underneath him and let him feed right to us and hopefully get a shot with our bow. Paul's plan worked beautifully. This bull fed right up to us, too close in fact. He spots me and flares out to 40. I put my 40 yard pin on him and let it rip. Put one right in the boiler room. Look at that big bull, what a magnificent trophy. What a bull, Whoa, oh my gosh. I had him at 16 yards, he's looking right at me. And a uh, smart old bull like that, he didn't give us much time. You know, he feared one look and he was gone. He went out to 40 and held. I was able to, at least thank goodness, the wind's coming right at me so it didn't affect my arrow. I snuck it right in. It looks great, let's go have a good look at him. Congratulations, thank you, Paul. Well, all you could see were these big, huge palmated tops waving on the skyline. And you notice that long back scratcher on his right side there. Yeah, it's uh, almost initially over a foot long but it probably took us a good half hour 45 minutes of straight walking pretty easy walk across this hill but he was definitely worth coming over here for there's no doubt about that oh he is just a fine congratulations fine thank you paul the biggest thing about this caribou is these tops the real heavy palmation on the sides here uh, you know you can't even get your fingers all the way around there plus his width i mean that's just tremendous width between the caribou here um, and the other thing that certainly you noticed right away was this long back scratcher here. That's got to be 14, 16 inches. And of course, the big shovel. That's a huge shovel for a central barren ground caribou. And it's actually a double shovel as well. Uh, this shovel off on this side, this little spike here, uh, is considered a shovel. So you've got yourself a fine trophy. Well, thank you very much, Paul. Thanks for watching today, and remember, fair chase is the only way to hunt and take trophy big game. We'll see you next week on the Eastman's Hunting Journal.